Kingfisher Interpretive Center Lesson 1, Salmon Exterior. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Shona. I'd like to welcome you to the Kingfisher Interpretive Center, but we're going to bring the T Interpretive Center home to you today. So this is part one of our salmon dissection. I hope you enjoy it. And before we get started, I'd just like to mention that this animal here was a living animal and we're grateful and thankful to be learning from it today. So let's learn about this salmon. So first thing I'd like to mention is that this salmon is really slippery. There is a slime coat covering this fish and that slime coat is an important thing for our salmon. It helps in a few ways. So first of all, it helps the fish slip through the water. It also might help the fish get away from a predator. And I think it helped this fish get away. If we look at the tail on this fish, we can see scars. So I think that the slime actually helped this fish to survive. Okay, now the other thing the slime helps with, it helps the fish to heal. So if our fish had a wound, say it had a cut right here, that slime would end up filling in that wound and it would help seal that wound tight and it would actually help the wound to heal as well. So slime, very important for fish. Now, if we look underneath the slime, what do you think we're gonna find? We're gonna find scales. So I'm going to try and remove one of these scales and these scales act as armor. So they're kind of like having little fingernails all over the side of this fish. And here we go, here's one scale. I don't know if you can see that, but we can learn from these scales too. If we look at the scale under a microscope, we're gonna see rings on it, kind of like a tree. So if we look at the rings on this scale under a microscope, we can actually determine how old the fish is. So scales are used by scientists all the time to learn how old our salmon are. Now this fish, aren't, they aren't born with scales. But what happens is when they become fry, their scales grow in and they don't grow more scales as they get bigger, the scales get bigger with them. Okay, excellent. Now what else can we learn from the outside of this fish? Well, we can see other adaptations to living in the water, such as the shape of the fish. So if we look at this fish, let me lift it up. So we can see that this fish is streamlined. It is built to be able to slip through the water. We can also see on here the color of the fish. And the color of these fish acts as camouflage. So this salmon still has its ocean colors. It is kind of dark along the back, silver, and then white on its belly. And that helps these fish camouflage in the ocean and hopefully avoid predators. Now, what else is on the outside of this fish that allows it to survive in water? Well, it needs to swim. So how is it gonna swim? What do you think it's gonna use for swimming? Well, if you said the tail, you're right. So this here, the tail is where the fish gets its forward motion. So it can swing its tail side to side to push it through the water. The fish doesn't wanna fall over on its side in the water, so it's got some fins to help with that. We have the dorsal fin up here, that stops it from tipping over. And the anal fin down here also helps from it tipping over. Now, if the fish wants to steer, it's got some other fins to help with that. So underneath, we actually have sets of fins. So there are, ooh, this fish is slippery. So we have two fins here to help with steering. And we have two fins here also to help with steering. And these fins also help the fish swim up and down in the water. Okay, this fish is also missing a fin. So if this was a wild salmon, we would see a fin right here. This fish only has a little bump and we can learn from that too. So this little bump tells us that this fish came from a salmon hatchery. So salmon hatcheries will remove the fins from some of the fish when they're only fry, when they're only this big. And that fin is removed to help us learn more about the salmon. So we know boys and girls 
that this is a hatchery salmon. We haven't, however, figured out what kind of salmon it is. So to choose from, we have Chinook salmon, we have sockeye salmon, we have chum salmon, we have pink salmon, and we also have coho salmon. And boys and girls, this here is a coho salmon. Excellent. Now, another thing that we can look at on this fish is a line. And that line travels all the way down the side of the fish. That line is very important. It senses vibrations in the water. It's called the lateral line. It actually helps the fish hear too. Do you see ears on the outside of this fish? No, there are no ears on the outside, but they do have bones inside their head that pick up those vibrations in the water as well. And that's what they use to hear. So the lateral line in the inner ear bones help the fish to hear, to sense those vibrations. This lateral line will also help them learn about the current in the water and maybe help them navigate to find their way when it's dark out or if the water's really dirty and they can't see. The vibrations picked up by the lateral line might also help them find food. So if there's little vibrations, that might be food. But if there's great big vibrations, maybe that's a killer whale coming to get it. So the lateral line is very important for this fish to be able to survive. Okay, now what else do we have on the outside? Boys and girls, I see eyes. So the fish has two eyes, just like we do. And those eyes are located on the side of the head. Now that enables the fish to be able to see from here almost all the way around themselves down to here. And same on the other side. The one thing they can do that we can't is they can move their eyeballs separately from each other. So this eye might be looking this way and this eye would be looking behind them. So that's another way to help them avoid predators. Okay, now if we look at the nose of the fish, there's a dot there and a dot there. Those are the fish's nostrils. Do you think they breathe through their nostrils like we do? Take a big breath through your nose. Where does that air end up? That air ends up in your lungs. Fish can't breathe through their nostrils like we can, their nostrils are only used for smelling. And I can tell you that these guys have a very sensitive sense of smell. So their smell actually helps guide them home to the stream they were born. Okay, now what else do we have on the outside of this fish? Well, we've got a hard cover here. You can almost hear, let me just tap on that. So you can hear that hard cover. That is the gill plate and it hides the gills and protects the gills. So if we open this up in behind, we can see where the salmon's gills are. And boys and girls, what are those gills used for? They're used for breathing, that's right. So that's how animals survive in the water. So they can breathe using their gills. And I'm gonna show you how water passes over their gills. I'm gonna open the fish's mouth, being very careful, those teeth are sharp. And I'm going to put this chopstick down its mouth and we'll see how water just passes through the mouth and right over the gills, just like that. So when you see fish in the water and you see them opening and closing their mouths, what they're doing is forcing water over their gills so that they can breathe, so they can take that oxygen out of the water. All right. So I think what we can do now is remove a piece of that gill plate and have a closer look. So I'm going to cut that off. Oh, that's pretty hard. We'll get there. There we go. We'll take a piece of the gill cover off. And you can see where the gills are laying in there. Now I'm going to remove one of those pieces of gills. Each gill has four arches, so I'll try and remove one arch to show you. So here we go. A little cut there. We'll do a little cut down here. And out comes the gill. 
just like that. So I think they kind of look like feathers. But you'll notice at the top of the gill, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see these sharp bony little things poking up. So those are called gill rakers. And they help the fish by directing food into the fish's stomach. We saw how the chopstick traveled over the gills right through here. Well, those gill rakers will help push the, the food into the fish's stomach. And we're gonna try and have a look into the fish's mouth. And we'll see if we can see those gill rakers and how they work. So I'm going to open the mouth of the fish and we'll see if we can see in there. And you can see the teeth on the outside of its mouth. And you might be able to see that black tongue in there. And there are little teeth like things on that tongue too, which allow for this fish to be able to hold on to its food. Having sharp teeth like that tells us that these fish don't actually chew their food like we do. They catch their food and they swallow it whole. Okay, boys and girls. Well, that's all that we're going to talk about today with the external anatomy. In other words, all the parts on the outside of this fish. So thank you for joining me today. And I'm excited to see you again for part two for the internal anatomy, all the stuff on the inside.